Hey, Eurovision fam, it's Alicia and Michelle. I am here and we are live. And yes, we got to finally listen to, I don't know, I feel like all the other weeks, the weeks went by really, really fast. And for some reason this week, I just was like, where are them rehearsal clips? Where are them snippets at? I need them now. I need them now. <laughs> and so then they finally dropped today. So I'm very, very excited. Okay, so I already did like a thread and this week was a little bit different. I did a thread on Twitter and I reacted at first just to like the clips that I saw, like the, the uh, sound clips that I listened to. Mm -hmm. Then I went back and did a thread based off the rehearsal. So I dropped down in the chat. So yes. Um, so firstly, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. We are live right now. And if you're watching a replay of this, why don't you join me live? Yes, I am going live after um, after we get the snippets. So that's basically been every Thursday evening for me because it works for my time. It's probably really late for you all. Uh, so apologies, but this is when I'm done doing work. <laughs> um, so I'm going live on Thursdays before uh, we get into the actual final. And then after the final, I go live and we talk about the results and everything that happened when we have basically the full pieces to critique. So, um, yes. All right. So I dropped in the chat a link to like my reaction to the snippets, because to be honest, like before I would, I would check like right when I got home from work. So then I'd be able to see, um, basically, uh, you know, kind of a cumulative like opinion based off of the snippets and the rehearsals. And I kind of put it together. It was interesting listening to the snippets first and then watching the rehearsals and kind of breaking down my reactions because they were different. Um, so let's kind of talk a little bit um, about like the snippets. So off of the snippets, I was most hopeful for Mariette. I was actually hopeful for Alvin. Um, I, I was hopeful for, um, uh, for faith, honestly. Um, and I would say those were like, and then Mahombi, I was just like, Oh, you know, Mahombi, I'm like, okay, so he's serving what he normally serves. And I think that this will go off well. So I was kind of in a place of like, feeling like, okay, uh, with the snippets. But the snippets, again, the people that I was most hopeful for from the snippets, and I'm literally like going on Twitter just to make sure, was Mariette. I was like, this sounds promising. I said, Albans sound promising. Um, uh, with, Dra um, with Drangarna, I was like, oh, I think I need to see the staging with this one. Um, and then Faiths, I was like, this seems promising. I, I was I was into that. So then I saw the rehearsals and actually saw the clips and it was very, very different. Um, um, so yeah, so I'm gonna break down and get into these comments first because I'm not here just talking to myself. You have joined me and you are in the comments and I love that and that's why if you're watching a replay of this, great, but you should totally be here live as long as you can. Um, yeah, I understand uh, y'all got to sleep. So I have to sleep too. So I totally understand. So um, hello, Zach. Hello, M M M M. Hey, Steven. So Philip says, to be honest, I think they are all pretty weak this semifinal. I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit underwhelmed from this bunch, especially because I actually felt like last week's heat was ended up being pretty competitive. Like once we actually listened to the tracks, I was like, ooh, like any of these could kind of advance. Like that's really how I felt last week. I felt like everyone was very professional on the stage last week. I thought the rehearsals were really strong last week. So I was kind of like, who knows what's gonna happen? Like who knows who the Swedish public is gonna vote for? Because yeah, honestly, last week I was like, this is anyone's game. Uh, everyone I thought was really strong. Um, Yeezus says, any song sounds like a Macklemore ripoff. Now, I will say when I listened to the snippet um, of the Anise Dawn demo or whatever, um, I instantly was like, this is Can't Hold Us. <laughs> like the beat was just total, like the, you know, the, hit, the hitting beat was completely Can't Hold Us. Um, 
But we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Uh, Tao Win says this semi is so bad. I don't want to call it bad. I don't want to call the semi bad. I don't want to say that. Luke says semi three is definitely the weakest so far. I might agree with that. I think this is the weakest. Like semi one was good, but I think it was very clear the bunch of four people who would advance. It was just trying to figure out, well, who will be, you know, direct to the final and who will be on Rahansen. I think, again, last week, to me, it was anyone's game. I thought everyone really, really got on the stage and served last week. Deep says, hey, uh, Tao Win says, Boys with Emotions is such a masterpiece. I, I mean, I really do love that track. And I do think it's going to end up in the final. I mean, we don't know anything could happen. But I would be very, very surprised not to see Boys with Emotions advance. But I mean, crazier things have happened, i.e., Laureen, statements, never forget. Um, Antonio says, good evening from Germany. Hey, hey, Antonio. Um, uh, Nina Sawyer says, Anna Bergendahl for the win. I think Anna has a very strong chance of winning. And I think it would be deserved. Like, it would be deserved. And again, I've said this in my other videos talking about last week. What a story that would be. I mean, for her, like, she doesn't even have to win for Sweden. Like, just her going and qualifying, I mean, I think it's just such a story. I think it's such a story for her. And, I mean, obviously sending that track would be a nice mix-up for Sweden because we've gotten a lot of the cute male guys singing nice, well-produced pop tracks. So it would be nice to have it mixed up a little bit. Um, Zach Thomas says, seems to, to me Anna's, oh, Anna's to lose it still or the mama's. Um, oh, it's Anna's to lose. Um, I wouldn't disagree with that, but I do think the mamas have a really good chance of winning. I really do. I think the international juries will really, really support the mamas. I also think the Swedish public will support the mamas. I think with them, they have the opportunity to get a lot from a lot of folks um, and a lot of different demographics. So I think that that works obviously to their advantage. Um Let's see, Dimitri, the whole stage this year is too dark, works for some, but mostly takes away from these performances. I don't disagree with that. I, I definitely don't disagree. I think that there's something to be said for kind of the overall dark staging. And I think the, the acts that suffer are acts like um, Drangarna, because for me, when I heard the song, in comparing it to stuff that they've done before, I was just expecting it to be a little bit more high energy. I don't know, maybe because I was listening to it while at work, that was messing things up for me. But even when I saw this, the stage performance, I was kind of like, oh, I need a little bit more. I want a little bit more fun. I want a little bit more of the joy on the stage. Um, uh, um, okay. Uh, Jam Slam says, will Loreen or Mons return in 2021 since Dami Eames returning for Australia? I doubt it. Um, ESC Daniel says, why Hannah Firm is the bookies favorite? You know, I think the bookies are thinking that the Swedish public wants to mix it up and send a female artist. I'm not going to lie, though. I don't know if Hannah is is the girl that could win it. And I think I've been saying this all along. I mean, we don't know the song. so. When we hear the song, I guess, you know, that'll reveal itself. But I think as of now, I mean, the Anna and the Mamas, I think, are the female energy girl power that we're getting right now. Um, so, yeah. But let me go in. Okay, y'all, I am going to now go through and talk about kind of my thoughts on every single person um, who will be performing in semi Three. So let's kick it off with Mariette. Um, after I listened to the snippet, I was like, thank you. I felt like listening to the snippet of the song, I felt like Mariette was getting a little bit closer to the tracks that she sort of does outside of Melody Festival. In. Um, and I will also say, if you see my preview video that I did, um, they had a clip of Mariette performing, I think, um, you know, somewhere at some like outdoor arena. And in... I'm like, I'm hearing sounds. I'm like, in the clip that they had of her, she was, um, she, you know, she was like performing with her guitar, which I think if you're used to seeing Mariette outside of Melody Festival, and that's kind of, I think, how you see her. And I've just personally been waiting to see her do a performance where she's just like that front woman of a band and just singing a song. And so I was hoping that we would get that on stage. 
Um, and I think I saw some photos where she is busting out her guitar. So let me talk about the positives. I actually really like the song. I know some people were underwhelmed with Mariette's track. I was not actually listening to the snippet and even listening to the rehearsal clip. Obviously, like Mariette is not a, not going to get on stage and hit any bum notes. Like that is not what's going to happen. So we don't have to worry about stuff like that. Um, I love the styling. Um, I in the rehearsal clip we did not see the guitar, but I saw some photos that she is working with her guitar. Like Robin Benson's track, I think a lot of people were not um, expecting Robin Benson to. Um, go direct to final. I think people were thinking that he would be under Hansen. So maybe Mariette will surprise us. But I also think that this could also potentially be her first time maybe having to do under Hansen. But we shall see. So now let's move on. Well, actually, let me see what y'all think of Mariette's. Uh, um, uh, is this anyone have any comments on Mariette? Um, looking, looking, looking. Well, some people are talking about daughter. Um, uh, okay. Elad says, Hey, Alicia, big fan from Washington, DC, too. Hey, DC, what? Um, uh, Olivia says, I love Mariette's energy. Um, and Zach says, It's good, but I need a higher impact chorus. I think actually the clip we got was the chorus. And with love, like everything that I saw happening on the stage actually seemed pretty high impact. I almost was kind of like, we could take it down and control it a little bit more and be a little bit more intentional with our meaningful movement. Because you guys know that I love when people talk with meaningful movement. So yeah, I think we could be a little bit more intentional with love. The clip that I heard, I was like, oh, okay. Um, I said that it sort of reminded me of a Hillsong song, which is a compliment. For me, that's a, that's a compliment. And I mean, like Hillsong United, now Hillsong Worship, because, you know, teens are now adults. So, uh, yeah, Hillsong Worship. So it reminded me of that, which I, I really did like. Um, I love that this song is in Swedish. I felt like it was promising. And then I got to... Um, the rehearsal and the live interpretation for me, the vocal was real shaky. Um, and then even the staging, it looked a little sloppy. Like he was just kind of moving around. Also, like if the girls have to show up in the outfit that they're potentially going to wear, like why are the guys not doing that? And I mean, like not why are the guys not doing that? I mean, Albin, why are you not doing that? Because I really, really hope and I truly believe that that is not the outfit that you plan on wearing when, you know, on Saturday night. I just, I don't think that that's what's going to be happening. Um, but yeah, I, Albin, I'm at this point looking at the rehearsal and what I saw, I am not hopeful that this will be something that will advance. And when I heard the snippet, I was hopeful. But again, the rehearsal, not hopeful now. So let's talk about um, Drangarna. So I, I was actually saying that I thought that Drangarna was going to be in our bunch for Anra Hansen or direct to final because I think their stuff is just so upbeat and it's really good. But it was something about the rehearsal that felt a little bit restrained. And I'm kind of like, no, let's like get more hype. Let's have this party popping petered out for me where I was just like, oh, OK, now it's oh, OK. Um, I do think I need to hear the full song before I really make up like my full opinion. Um, but even like I said, even with the rehearsal, I did feel like it wasn't as hype as it could have been. And I don't know. I just think that they need to turn up the energy in like every way, shape and form. Um, yeah. So let me hop back into these comments. Zach, hello from Chicago. Hey, USA, Eurovision fans. We exist. We exist. <laughs> um, uh, let's say, okay, um, looking at the comments, looking at the comments. Tao Wen says, Mahombi is supposed to fly. Yes, yes, um, he is going to fly. Well, not supposed to. I saw pictures. He is flying, uh, which is dope. So let's talk about Amanda Asa. So, um, or maybe it's Amanda Asa. I don't know. <laughs> um, so, when I listen to the track, I, I, um, I think that this is a nice debut, but I was almost thinking like, well, maybe she'll get something really high impact that 
you know, or maybe she'll get something really unique that'll stand out um, that could maybe make her like a surprise um, advancement. Um, but I, I don't think that this is going to advance. I did notice in the rehearsal, she was giving a little bit nervous energy. She didn't look completely comfortable with the choreography and the movement on stage. And I, again, I understand that this is a rehearsal, but like, as we know, like these rehearsals are recorded. So this is a lot of people's like first impression of what you could serve. And she just looked a little bit stiff slash uncomfortable about where to go. So then when it came to delivering the song and like selling it with kind of like that je ne sais quoi, like attitude, you know, that just wasn't really happening because it just seemed as if she was still a little bit in her head, like, oh, move here. Oh, I've got to do this. Oh, okay. Look over here. It just seemed she was still a little bit in her head. So I think if she gets comfortable, uh, this performance will definitely be a little bit better. And hopefully, and I mean, she has time to get more comfortable. Um, but ultimately, based off the performance and the snippet, I'm thinking this will just be a nice debut and introduction for her. But I don't see this advancing at this point. I, I just don't see that. And um, yeah, so Swede Miro, Swede Miro says, Asa did um, Swedish Idol and the stiff thing was there already then. Okay, so maybe this is just her thing. Callie Stir says, I'm confused that her song was in Swedish as I was expecting something in English. I was expecting something in English, but I appreciate the fact that it was in Swedish. I actually was kind of like, oh, well, then maybe this will make her stand out a little bit more. And then we got to, you know, the staging and it was like, oh, okay, no, this is likely to stay in the semi. Um, definitely likely to stay in the semi. Uh, here we go. So um, Zach Thomas says, I wonder if that pre Melfest wild, car wild card contest will ever produce a qualifier. Yeah, I was actually thinking that this year might be the year because I love her voice. Um, she has a great voice. And this song doesn't even really seem to be showcasing her strong vocals. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed by that. So let's move on to um, Anise Don Demina or Don Demina. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. But uh, moving on to him, I will confess, I have not been converted to the Swedish rap module yet. He will not be the Pied Piper to convert me. However, um, listening to the snippet, I was like, I don't know if this is going to advance. Watching the performance after watching everything else, I was like, oh, I'm awake now. Okay. Like we having a little party on stage. Okay. So I'm kind of thinking, you know, Anise might be in for a little Andra Hansen moment. <laughs> um, I, you know, I feel ambivalent about it because I'm like, do I want it to advance? I mean, I don't think I would really listen to this song in my car. I might listen to the instrumental. I don't know. There was something very fun about the performance that sort of convinced me. The thing is, some people were kind of comparing it to like Samir and Victor, which I will say about Samir and Victor, I liked their songs. I really was into kind of what they would serve because I feel like they sort of had like a sense of humor about themselves. Whereas this one, you know, I feel like he is like a serious rapper, but I like that he's having fun with this. So I like the track. I do think that this could possibly be Honor Hansen, uh, really just off the fact that it truly does wake you up in the show. And I think it's hard to forget the performance. So that's kind of where I'm thinking that's at. It, honestly, like I didn't necessarily have high hopes and I was like, oh, okay. Like I was, I was into it. Um, and let's close out with Faith. So if y'all watched my like preview videos, um, thinking about Faith, I was thinking that this was our wild card person that was really gonna come through and surprise a lot of folks and qualify um, for, the, for the final or go to Anra Hansen. And I guess I still sort of feel that way. Let me say, so I'm a little bit torn. And I, I will say that I tend to be more critical of people I like <laughs> and people that I I want to see do really well. So listening to the snippet, I remember I said that uh I got I I got um 
flashbacks of Jan Lundvik's uh, debut at Melfest because the song that he had that he debuted at Melfest with, it wasn't really that current. It was like a little bit dated, um, but it but his vocal was so good. He was just so nice and endearing, like kind of the charisma he brought to the stage really did sell it. And again, his vocal was so good. His, his vocal was so good. So I, I love her vocal tone. Um, so let me get to the negatives with her performance and, and the rehearsal. I'm not a fan of the styling. I feel like they have her styled. I mean, hell, Linda is older than her and Linda had a fresher look, you know, than we're giving faith. And that's, and I don't like that. I don't like, and honestly, I really don't like it when they put women of a certain age in you know, matronly clothes either. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think there's a difference between, you know, someone who is really older and seasoned being in something tasteful and age appropriate and like putting an older woman in something covered up just because she's like 40, which I think is ridiculous. So with Faith, you know, she's not 40, but she is definitely wearing something that I could see them putting on a 40 year old. And so I don't really appreciate that. So I really feel like her styling should be a little bit fresher, especially since this is our, our introduction to her. So I, I wish her styling was fresher. I wish she maybe had white on. White looks beautiful on black skin. I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> um, so I would have liked to have seen her in something brighter on stage. Here's the thing. Um, when I heard the snippet, I was like, this is really promising. I'm into it. And then when I saw the rehearsal, the clip of it that I saw in the rehearsal, the song sounded a little bit dated. Um, it sounded dated. And what I, what I compared it to was Brenda K. Starr. Um, like, I still believe, I mean, you know, which who doesn't, you know, mind a Brenda K star moment, unless you are a young performer introducing yourself at Melody Festival and, and you should have a track that is somewhat current. Um, yeah, the vibe, the instrumentation, the synth that I was getting from the track was just old. <laughs> I I just had a flashback of um <laughs> my big fat Greek wedding when the dad <laughs> looks at the daughter and he's like, you need to get married. You're starting to look old. And and she says, my dad's been telling me that since I was 12 years old. Um <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's just something about it. so with the styling uh, I don't know. Let me talk to y'all in the comments. Okay. <laughs> um, Sweet Mira, Sweet Mira says the mama should wear white. I completely agree. Um, uh, what else? Oh, T says, in my opinion, Faith's song is kind of a snooze. She's a good vocalist, I think, but the song is kind of dated. Very unfortunate. Uh... Callie Stir says Faith has had really good reviews from the Swedish press. Yeah, so see, that's why I had high hopes. And so then when I actually saw the rehearsal clip, I was kind of like, wait, what? Like, what were y'all talking about? Because if this, because with love, if this was sung by Corolla, y'all would all be going, you know, we love Corolla, but the song sounds like, what Corolla gave us, you know, in 93. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like I just, I feel like, you know, maybe people are being nice. I mean, I should say this. I love her vocal tone. I just wish the track felt fresher. Yeah. So, so yeah, let's see. Um, um, Don says, styling aside, I do think Faith's staging looks very nice and atmospheric. I agree with you. Again, another person that I thought of when I heard the song was like Sana Nielsen performing for Melody Festival and, you know, maybe her third time. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, what year was that? It just, it felt, it felt very, it, it just felt a little bit like seasoned performer I shouldn't say seasoned performer. It felt very like veteran performer-esque, the song. It just felt 
dated to me. I oh, um, but I love the staging. I love the staging. We need a new outfit. Something fresher and younger. Something fresher and younger. Um, uh, Jam Slam says UK should send Madonna. Not at that interval act performance last year. Absolutely not. Um, Annie B says Alicia to compete for UK. Ha ha pipes. Um, I should not. I should not compete in Eurovision, but I would bust out some duop pops in the background with some fly backing vocals. I would do that. <laughs> um. So Swede Miro, Swede Miro says Swedes really don't care about current or not as long as you have a distinct style vibe. But is this a dis distinct style or vibe? If I've just literally named off like other artists that I feel like you could have just swapped in her place and had them sing it. I could hear Corolla singing it. I could hear Senna Nielsen singing it. Hell, I could hear Sonia Aldin singing this song. I mean, for real, like for real, it just, but I still think, because I, I kind of felt like, you know, even Jan Lundvix, because that's why I got flashbacks of my turn, my turn, you know, that song wasn't, fresh. It sounded very like, you know, in sync album one, you know, backstreet, maybe album two. Um, so, I mean, it might advance. I, I would like to see her have a nice debut. And so I think that's why I'm being so hypercritical because I'm just like, I'm rooting for you, girl. We're all rooting for you. <laughs> um, uh, Orion said, Alicia literally predicted Mariette singing with her guitar on the artist reaction. I did. <laughs> I really did because I think that Mariette singing with guitar is her strong suit. I think that is her. And I think if they do that recap clip of Mariette behind her guitar, strumming her guitar, I think that that is gold. Okay. We didn't talk about Mahombi yet. Let's talk about Mahombi. So when I heard Mahombi snippet, I was like, oh, Okay. So this is about to advance when I saw the clip and then I saw the rehearsal and I was like, oh, okay, y'all are waiting to show us the cool stuff. Cause I had already seen some photos of the rehearsal. Mahombi is about to be probably direct to final. I'm gonna say that because this song is probably the strong, like Mahombi song is probably the strongest in the semi. It probably is. And honestly, I'm not even that big of like a Mahombi fan per se. I was not really into hello at all. Uh, but I do think that this track is good. I think that this track has a melody, it's catchy, and I think the staging will also wow. So I think Mahombi is really serving a full package here. I think the Swedish public will buy it. I think I, I just I think that the, that Mahombi, if we're talking about who is definitely direct to final, I think Mahombi is it. I definitely think Mahombi is it. Um so Olivia MacArthur says, so far, I don't think the winner is from this semi. I don't either. I think Robin still has a has a good chance. I think the mamas have a good chance. I think Felix is still in the mix because I do think Felix is going to advance from Anna Hansen. I also think that Anna Bergendahl, yes. Yes. Um, I think a lot of us ESC fans are kind of rooting for daughter. Like we just like her <laughs> and I like bulletproof again. I'm not into the shorts. I don't, I don't understand the shorts look, but I I'm guessing that it's like, it's kind of a cool girl thing. So I, I kind of understand the whole, like, okay, I'm a cool girl. So, you know, I got my shorts on look, but again, just with the movement that she's doing on stage, I don't think that the shorts really are the movement personally. I, I the, the way that I feel about the shorts is how I felt about Mariette's uh, baggy random denim when she performed for you. That's how I feel. It's just like distracting. And I'm like, I don't even know why I'm thinking about this. Like, I just want to focus on the performance. But also, like, it's my issue, probably not an issue for other people. Um, but yeah. Um, ESC France said, Mahombi's song is the best of the semi for me. I think the chorus is very effective. I agree. Um, Annie B says, Mahombi staging looks the best. I can see something special happening. And Savak was like, well, I didn't even get to use mine in the final at Eurovision. So like, you could have them. 
Uh, so yeah, I think Mahomby is actually, I, I think Mahomby is going to be direct to final. He's the one that I feel like is the most surefire direct to final person, but I don't, but you know, who knows? We really, really don't, we really, really don't know. Um, uh, Annie B says, no, please not Felix. Look, I mean, I like boys with emotions. I know y'all, I know y'all don't like it, I guess. Um, I like it. I like the staging. I like the track. I just, I like it. <laughs> I like it and I get it. And I think the only thing that makes me kind of like, no, Sweden, not Felix, is just based off the sending a young, good looking man or really young boy, but good looking man singing a well-produced pop track. Like Sweden, we know you do that well. I think folks want to see y'all do something different. Want to, yeah. So um, Adam Tideman says, Admiral Hansen feels pretty strong this year, especially if Mariette or Mahombi goes there, which is very possible. I don't think Mahombi's going to Andra Hansen, but I do think Mariette could be going to Andra Hansen this year. This year, I think Mariette could be going to Honor Hansen for the first time ever. It might be a cool experience for her. Um, Callie Stir says, have, have you given up hope that Mariette will direct to final for the fourth time? Would that be some sort of record? Well, I guess I just said it. <laughs> I guess I just said what I really think. Uh, Eurotainment says, what about Dragarna? I liked it more than the others. You see, I was I I've listened to their other stuff, and I think their other stuff is more high impact and more high energy. You know, Drangarna could probably be Honor Hansen along with um Anis Don Dabina. <laughs> um, but I think it's complicated because I think folks still really love Mariette. So it's difficult, and I don't want to jinx her. Lord, let me knock on some wood. I just don't see her not being Honor Hansen or direct to final. And again, I do think that Mariette could surprise a lot of folks and kind of do what Robin did. Because I remember I heard some people thinking that Robin was not going to qualify, but that song is so damn catchy. That I, it's just it's too it's too catchy. Um uh what else is it? Um Nina Sawyer says, I'm the first person to say that Sweden should stop sending young boys, but to be honest, I low-key like boys with emotions. I ain't mad at you, girl. Um, Blue Steel, is Anise Don Domina the Swedish DJ Khaled? I'm going to look up the Swedish translation of We the Best. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Swede Miro, Swede Miro says, Drangarna was middling and low energy in the live clip. Yeah, they really were. With with the low energy that they were serving, I was like, mm, maybe y'all won't be Ander Hansen. Because I don't know if it, unless... They might really turn up the energy on Saturday and qualify. So let's let let me break this down of who I actually think is going to make it through, which is so tricky because I do think this semifinal is uh, is complicated. I I do think that this semifinal is complicated. I think that yeah, I, I yeah, I, I think it's complicated. I I I was. I will say other than what we think, uh, yeah, potentially it might be clearer than what we think is actually going to go down. So um, so let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, y'all tell me your predictions for who you think in the comments. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm, I'm between Dringarna and Anis Don Domina for Andra Hansen with Mariette also being Andra Hansen. And honestly, everyone that I've said Andra Hansen for, well, not everyone, but some people I said, like I ended up, I feel like for semi one, literally my predictions flipped. So I was like, maybe Andra Hansen, Robin. Well, no, I think I actually said that the after seeing the rehearsal clip, I think I actually said the mamas would be direct to final, but I thought that Felix would be direct to final. But I thought that... um I did think that Ma I was pretty sure that Malu was going to be on Hansen. So actually for the first semi, I think I was pretty, I was pretty set, but I think I had maybe like Anna and daughter for like Andra Hansen, like I was hoping and they ended up being direct to final. So, um, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. They ended up being direct to final. So I'm, I'm thinking Mahomby is definitely direct to final. I'm thinking that, um, 
I'm thinking Faith could be Andra Hwanson. Let's just say that Mariette is Andra Hwanson. And then I'm I'm going to say that... Mm, I'm going to say that Jangarna and Anise are going to be kind of battling it out because their energy... His was so high energy. <laughs> and I'm like, I... Uh, in the spirit of Mendez and Alvaro, I'll say that Anise is able to squeak his way through. But I'm not sold on that because I really do think that Drangarna can turn up the energy and give us something really high impact when we're finally watching on Saturday night. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. What do you guys think? Okay, so um, Annie B says, Mahombi and Mariette, I'm thinking you're saying like they're direct to final. Um, Candy Main said Faith might be a dark horse this Saturday, being maybe like Mahombi and Faith, and then like Mariette and Anisa or Drangarna. Um, but right now I'm like, I do, hmm. Yeah, no, I think, isn't that what I said? I can't even remember what I said. <laughs> I really do think that, um, I think, I think it could be like Mahombi and Faith. And I do think Mariette is going to be on her Hansen. And I think that, uh, and I think it's like between Drangarna and Anise, Don Domina. Like my instinct almost says like, even though Anise is giving us like a high impact, like fun, catchy hip hop vibe and song, that that means that, you know, he'll be able to kind of get through. But because it is kind of hip hop, and just looking at what happened, what's happened before, even thinking about last, was it last year? I'm like, I can't even remember if it was last year, but like, I was surprised that Tempo didn't advance. Um, who is the one from Om Omar from Foendo? His song didn't advance. And I thought he had a great live performance and his vocal was tight. Um, so yeah, Arthur says, I want Mariette direct. I honestly think Mariette could be like the Robin. I don't think a lot of people are thinking that Mariette will go direct to final after seeing the rehearsal clip, but I thought the song was actually kind of strong. Like I actually was like, ooh, I, like I like this. I think I actually might prefer this song to For You. Actually, I might, I, like I still think Don't, Don't Stop Believing the same album as For You, but better than A Million Years, I think. Cause I preferred For You to a million years, the track, the studio track. Um, Upfront Bear 74 says, Mahombia Mariette, but wouldn't be sad if Faith Kikimbo and Drangarna went direct to final. I don't know if Drangarna will be direct to final though, especially given how kind of chill the rehearsal was. And like I said, even for me, when I heard the snippet, I was expecting the snippet to be a little bit more high impact than it actually was so that kind of maybe that underwhelmed me a little bit but I'm like I need to see the full the full song and have the full experience on Saturday um uh so Swede Mirror Swede Mirror says Swedes like ballads but not really diva ballads so Faith so but not really the diva ballads so Faith has a good chance is Faith not doing a diva well I guess it's not really like a it's not like the, like I'm thinking about Victoria's was like a diva ballad, you know? Um, when you turn and I turn us apart. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Callie Stir, are you surprised that SVT front loading Melfest this year? They could have saved Felix or Robin this semi. You know, I'm not going to lie. I do think the way that we, split up the acts this year is very interesting. I I don't know how I like this distribution of artists and the songs. If I'm being honest, there's something about this distribution that does feel a little bit off uh, to me personally. Um, Euro Tamus said, but Victoria was direct to final. Yes, but if you saw her numbers at the final, 
interesting, but you know, whatever. I, and I was, well, that's not for me, Eurotainment. Uh, I, I was reading someone else's comments. So I guess that was, that was sweet, sweet Miro, sweet Miro's um, comment. All right. So those are my thoughts. What do you think? Talk to me in the comments below. Don't forget, I will be going to the Melfest Grand Final in Stockholm, Sweden. I am so excited. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me for this live. I am so excited to be going live after this semi because this semi is going to be interesting. I'm, I'm really excited to see how it's all going to shake out. Thanks for joining me and chatting with me, everyone. Bye. <laughs>